And we're back with some more oxygen not included on Rhyme. And we're still trying to get, well, we're trying to get all of the achievements, all 35 of them, in 365 days. Well, because one of the achievements takes 300, you have to survive for 365 days, so we'll see how it works out. Anyway, uh, for the time being, I want to try and get this electrolyzer up and running. The biggest uh, hurdle I'm facing at the moment is getting this super sustainable achievement, which requires me to generate a bunch of power using only the sustainable generators, which is hamster wheels, steam, solar, and hydrogen. Can't use any of the carbon fuels. So what I want to do is get this up and running, and so long as this is running, we'll be generating lots of power, and it'll be helping us achieve that. Now, there's a great suggestion in the comments. Don't uh, dump the hydrogen out. Instead, just run it through a filter. The amount of hydrogen I'm going to save when I pull it out of the top here eh, will work. I mean, I don't have to leave the filter hooked up the whole time. It's just uh, it might be handy to have the filter in place at least to start, and I can always remove it later so that I'm not wasting power. So I still have not hooked this all up, but I think the last thing left to do is hook up the water. I just want to dump some polluted water in here, and once I get some polluted water in here, I can prime the system. Another suggestion was I don't have to worry about running... The, I should run this water through a desalinator and a water sieve because they don't damage each other and they don't burn power. Now, I haven't tested whether or not they burn power, but they seem to know what they were talking about. So if it doesn't burn power, that's great. But I do want to save the polluted water. I might need that for growing some crops later. So I'd like to try and sort of sieve off or siphon out the polluted water, but without spending any energy on it. So what we've got here is... Uh, we'll just plug this in and I'll show you how this is going to work. We've got our polluted water delivery... And now we're just going to dump this into the system. This is just a power-free way of filtering stuff. And when the water comes down here, it's going to dump across this line. So once this water is all finished going through, you can see we'll still be left with this sort of rotating blob here. What's just going on is the polluted water is going around in a circle. It hits this liquid valve, which sucks 10 grams across. So 10 grams of water just keeps getting sucked back in here and spun around and around and around. Due to the way the mechanics of this game work, what that allows us to do is... Um, you know what, we'll just deconstruct one piece. Any water coming from up here, if any of it's polluted, it will get sucked across the line and dumped out the other side, because that's the only water that's allowed out that side. However, any other type of water won't be able to get sucked across there, so it'll just keep going on, and it's just a, an energy way of filtering. It's been going on for quite some time. However, we do need to make a, a few little precautions here. Hopefully this would prevent any uh, issues. If we do send through a whole kilo or 10 kilos of water, not all of it can get across. This pipe already has 10 grams in it. So if we send through 10 kilos at a second, it could cause problems. So we just limit the flow a bit. I'm just going to limit it to 9 kilos. And that should cause us to be able to have a power-free way of filtering out the polluted water for later use. And then that means all we need to do is to get in the desalinator to get rid of any of the salt water, and we should be good to go. There we go. Desalinator in place. That will filter the salt water and brine coming from down here. Well, mostly salt water. And then that will get sent up here. And we'll pump that into our electrolyzer setup up there. Let's see. Might want to put in a liquid storage tank somewhere in the middle just in case of power interruptions. Uh, do we have time for that? You know what? No. We're just going to do it straight through and we're going to hope that nothing breaks. We're, we're on a clock here. We don't have time to be too particular. And I completely blanked the food shortage again. I'm going to have to automate that. I've got the automation to take care of um, ranching now. I just, uh, I've got someone who can build. I just don't have the time. I need to get this up and running as soon as possible. There's several things I'd like to do. I also like to sort out the bathrooms and replace them with plumb toilets. Though, what's the temperatures like over here? It's still in the minus degrees. I need to get that up a little bit. So I need to put in some kilns and maybe warm up the place. There's, there's so many things I want to do. There's just not enough time to do it. And Slickster. I need to take the Slickster. Uh, I have to take the slickster so I can get the achievement. So, yes. Is it warm enough here? It's not warm enough here yet, is it? You know what, we'll leave that for a minute, and I'll put in some electric heaters after I start up the electrolyzer setup. Yes, yes, that that's perfect. Yeah, that's so handy. But first, food, food. Uh, we need to get the food sorted here, so let's put that all on level 8. We need all the food as... Oh, no, I want to capture them first. This may take some time. Oh, and there's also a... Oh, it seems there's some of these uh, hatcheries are not quite full. Well, probably the stone hatch ones. All right, well, once these are all wrangled, we can then hopefully turn them into calories. Another thing I should point out, it was also mentioned in the comments, uh, I never inspected this vending machine. These vending machines sometimes field uh, rations, so yeah, I, I probably should have, you know, rummaged through it to get food, especially when I was so desperate early on. Just one of those things you forget about. These things do give you out uh, food, so why not? Anyway, I'll get some food out of that as well. So, it's just about time to start this sucker up. We've got uh, water coming up from here. 
Uh, that water is going to get desalinated here. That'll get us clean water that'll go up to our system. Any polluted water should hopefully... Why are you not desalinating? Pipe blocked. Oh, wait. I don't have anything at the end of this, do I? You know what? Yeah, let's hook that up now. There we go. Yeah, that seems like it's spitting it. What's wrong? Are we running out of power? Do we? No, we have plenty of power on the system. Yeah, I'm going to get some overloads here. I know that, but uh, I'm going to be breaking off chunks of the network as we go. So, water is going up. That's still not nearly enough water. Why is that taking so long? One second. This whole turning on is turning out to be... Well, very complicated, of course, uh, because I'm rushing all of this. The water in the pipes in here is starting to freeze, so I need to turn it on now so I can get the water moving. I did a little bit of rejigging on the power, so I have this now powered... Well, I, I, this takes 480 watts, so I hook that into the bottom row of fans, and that should give us a power wire that's, what, 1.92 kilowatts? We're not going to overload that. And this wire here is 720 watts, and that powers the electrolyzers themselves and the top gas pump. So... Yeah, let, let's start plugging this in and see what happens. We're going to plug in the bottom row first. And that's hopefully going to get these gas pumps started, assuming these are set to, if the pressure is above 440, I want you to turn on. Or you can just sit there and do nothing. Ah, yeah, I have to hook up the gas pipes, don't I? <laughs> Got the, trying to get everything done. Right, that will start the gas evacuation process. Hmm. Now we need to get the top one set up as well. For that, we have this power wire here. This is going to put onto our main grid, which is... Yeah, that's going to put us a little bit over the edge, but hopefully we won't get too many overloads. Barbecue... Okay, I'm going to need to do another calorie binge again. Uh, Gas-wise, the hydrogen is now going to... Some of that hydrogen that was up the top, there was already some trapped in there. That's going to end up going down the sides and getting thrown into our hydrogen generators. Nice. Oh, downside. Yeah, we've already overpressurized the gas in this area. You know what? We need some more space. Uh, eh, that should break us out some... Oh, actually, that's even more overpressurized. Ah, never mind. I'll have to sort something out with that. For the time being, yeah, I'm going to have to start running these gas pipes further so I can get this gas further and further away from here. The uh, system itself has still not evened out. I need to get rid of all the gases in there and have that all the top part oxygen before I... or top part hydrogen before I can consider that fixed. Uh, gas pipe wise, I'm going to run a bunch of gas pipes here and get this whole place oxygenated. I have now queued up an enormous amount of gas piping. That should uh, keep my dupes busy for quite some time. I want to get the gas distributed around my base as much as possible. There's also an achievement for getting pumping X amount of oxygen to uh, gas vents. So this should help achieve that as well. How are we looking in here? Is it even it? No, there's still some polluted oxygen left in there. Once the polluted oxygen is gone out of there, and that's all hydrogen, which... That shouldn't take too much longer, to be honest. There's any micrograms of the stuff left. We can remove this uh, powered gas filter up here. Hmm. Is that... Yeah, and power-wise, have we got any overloads? I haven't seen any, but... Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave that, not worry about it, and get around to automating our food, because food, having to do this constantly, is becoming quite an annoyance. The Rodriguez has sorted itself out. Now the entire top part is hydrogen. That means we don't have to worry about any non-hydrogen coming out of the system. Uh, that simplifies things an awful lot. We'll just stick in a, let's see, a gas bridge right there. And once that's in, we can remove this powered filter and that will start saving us power. And once this gas line backs up with hydrogen, we can disconnect this, uh, where is the power? We can disconnect this here so that this whole system is then self-powered. Food shortage again. Like I said, I really need to take care of that, uh, the food issues. Anyway, that's all that sorted. I think I can stop the digging on this. We can cancel that. I'll be back for the gold later, but not just yet. Uh, for the time being, yeah, I want to get this sorted. So we're going to have to build this up. I think uh, we're going to turn that off. We're going to allow everyone in here, and it's time to start getting... Auto Actually, wait, no. It's time to start automating this, so what I want to do is put in auto sweepers above all of these. I tried to make that one out of gold, do I have any left? Resource wise, I've got, I've hammered out more copper, I've got a lot of lead, I've got 12 tons of lead already, just from what I've managed to scrape out down in the oil biome. I did a little bit of exploratory digging in the oil biome, as well as that, that lead is being used in the power control stations. I'm refining lead down to make uh, overclocking chips, so that these things can get the, what's it called, the NG's tune up. So it's a plus 50% of power output. 
That's why when we look at this in the power overlay, instead of showing 800 watts, they're showing 12. This allows us to get more power out of our hydrogen, which is going to help... Ooh, is that a broken pipe segment? Uh, yeah, liquid pipe. That's pretty damaged. So long as that keeps flowing, though. It's not flowing, is it? I might have to break this open and replace that with insulated piping. Or make sure that it just keeps flowing. I could I could just make sure the gas keeps pumping. You know what? Let's, let's not worry about that for the time being. For the time being, we'll get this in place. And once that's in place, we can cut this system off and switch entirely to getting food. I want to automate food next because that's the biggest time consumer. That should be the end of that. Since only hydrogen will be coming up here, that hydrogen will get sent down here into these, this section. Oh, and we've already got a backup of hydrogen on the system, which means... Yeah, the power down here is completely sorted. We can start disconnecting this from our main grid. Yep. Once that's done, this whole system will be self-sustained, powered by its own hydrogen. I can probably... You know, yeah, I can get rid of this hamster wheel. We don't need that anymore. That hamster wheel can go... Well, theoretically, I've never tried starting up the system this way without some sort of coal generator backup. Now that that's all done, though, yeah, it's time to prioritize all of these. And another giant construction project started. We're going to stick in auto sweepers and we're going to stick in auto loaders. Of course, we have to power the whole thing as well. I think I'm going to start switching over to 2 kilowatt conductive wire in this area. I'm still going to have to run most of this base on something and the 1 kilowatt wire is not going to be able to cut it, so might as well start including the 2 kilowatt wire now. It's still going to be plugged into 1 kilowatt wire, but I'm going to be upgrading all of that in a bit. But I'd rather put in this 2 kilowatt now, even though it's not going to be perfect. So it's just slow. I won't have to upgrade it later is the, uh, the plan, really. So once all that goes into place, which will take a bit of while, I can then switch over to having my uh, hatches auto-evolve instead of having to manually go in and spend time and effort taking care of it. Uh, Oxygen-wise, yeah, still beautiful. Perfect. We've got plenty of power, and we're soon going to get hydrogen overflowing and powering even more of our systems. Oh, and we've got the NG's tune-ups going on, so that's another one. Let's have a quick look at the colony summary. Carnivore, we're, hmm, we're about 120,000 calories short. That's plenty of time, though. We're only at cycle, what? We're about cycle 70. We, we're going to smash that one out. Uh, super sustainable, we're only at, what, 11 of 240? So yeah, we got a long way to go on that one, but we, we've just started up our electrolyzer. Uh, outdoor renovations. I could get around to doing the get a room one now, but uh, th there's no need. Uh, there's no rush on that one, and that's going to be hammered out really quickly when the time comes. I've got much more important things I need to be taking care of. Oh, distribute a thousand kilos of oxygen via vents. We'll, we're going to have that one done pretty quickly. This one seems to be bugged, even though both of these are ticked. Uh, there's some sort of bug, and bed bath won't... Uh, won't work for some reason. Thanks for everyone in the comments for pointing that out. That was sort of, sort of frying my noodle. Uh, upgrading the lavatories, that's something we'll get around to after we sort food. And down the hatch for smooth hatches, we'll, we'll get around to that later. But yeah, I think we're doing well so far and we should get some more of this hammered out this episode. I need to increase the heat up here, but that's going to happen after we sort food. This uh, constantly making barbecue is becoming a bit problematic and slow. And for one more achievement, we've got oxygen not occluded. Distribute 1,000 kilos of oxygen using gas vents. Uh, and that's another one ticked off. Uh, Research-wise, I think we've got pretty much everything. Yeah, we've got all the top half of the tree. All we've got left is introductory rocketry, and that's it. Once we get introductory rocketry done, we've got all the basics before we have to hit space. That's all by cycle 70. It really is quite handy how quickly you can get up there with it. Uh, meet... Oh, you. Yeah. I'm still trying to finish automating this, but it takes a bit of time. I only have a few characters who are able to build. I've just gotten Ant-Man and Iron Man both up to Mechatronics Engineer. Bane is already up at Mechatronics Engineer, despite being, what, super strong? Oh, is their, their strength at? Yeah, their strength is at 14. Despite their super strength, they, they, they've gone, uh, they, they've branched out and gotten themselves a degree. Uh, with three of them, I should hopefully be able to make this up just a little bit faster. Go Iron Man. Iron Man has just been working like a beast right now. They've just they've just done all of that railing all the way up there. Go for it, buddy. Damn. Yeah, once this is all done, we should hopefully have this annoying food shortage symbol go away forever. It's been flashing since pretty much the start of the game. Well, since I, I started getting into ranching anyway. Uh, I'm just going to skip this forward quite a bit. There's just uh, lots of infrastructure that needs to go in. That's all there is. Gas piping-wise, yeah, we finally got the oxygen flowing everywhere. 
Though I think I'm going to eventually dump uh, some of that oxygen into space just so I can get more hydrogen so I can power more generators. And we're starting to get a stockpile of hydrogen which I'm going to use to power my base. But after the rails go in, after we get the food automated. Almost done. It's only cycle 72 and uh, that's, a, that's all it took to get all of this automation in place. Once this is, uh, once this door is here, I can then sort of dump water down on top of this. And yeah, the automation is in place. There's the, the first egg coming in from the automated section. Oh, I haven't set this one. Uh, what I've done is I've set all of these, so critter eggs in terms of hatchlings, sage hatchlings, and stone hatchling eggs, all of those will be sent over. I'm going to have to do one when smooth hatchling comes up, come up. They haven't hit yet. Though I am feeding these, where is it? These uh, stone hatches down here, they're getting fed on... Was it gold amalgam? So they're getting lots of gold amalgam. They should be fine. What's the... Yeah, there's seven of them in here. Eventually, they're going to start popping out smooth hatches. Though it's taking a while. Why are you taking so long? No, yeah, never mind. Maybe there's a limit to how much... Um, wait. Yeah, maybe there's a limit to how much uh, percentage chance they can have of laying those eggs. Anyway, now that that's in place, I can deconstruct that door and we're going to dump water in here. Once water's in here, we shouldn't have to worry about doing any more uh, manual evolution ourselves. And how much... Yeah, we got enough barbecue to keep us going for a little bit longer. Finally, auto evolution has been automated, and we don't have to worry about doing any more uh, manual culling anymore. Uh, over here, we're going to get some heat going on. Uh, what I've done is I've set this up for clay and coal. What we're going to do is start getting cer some ceramics on. We have 51 tons of clay, so we can make, well, about 51 tons of ceramic. That should generate an awful lot of heat while we're here as well. Uh, food is only going to be a shortage until, yeah, they're going to start dropping shortly. Yeah, so once they start dropping, we'll have more. F yeah, there we go. Plenty of fresh meat. That should be the last of that food short shortage notice I was getting. Next up, I'm replacing the entire power grid with lead, because we have plenty of lead now, because we've got access to the oil biome. I'm overwriting everything with lead. I'm sure there's bits I'm going to miss and mess up, but, you know, what can you do? Uh, you know what? We will deconstruct that. We don't need that anymore. I'm just going to tidy up the electrical grid so that there's no more overloads. Uh, finally, we've also managed to knock out all the research that's not space, which means that's probably one of the things on our agenda next, is to get up to space to get more space research. But I still need to just take care of some minor issues. One uh, polluted water seems to have gotten into the system. Yeah, these energyless filters, I've done something wrong. I probably should have put the limiter after... The, the sieve, maybe? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to have to break this open, though, and fix the system. Hopefully it won't cause too many issues. Also, I'm going to go in there and replace that uh, that pipe, insulated piping. Yeah, we're going to make this all, of course, extremely high priority. We don't want to have this uh, open for too long. It'll probably mess up the gas pressures. Well, the hydrogen's just about... Yeah, the hydrogen likes that. It's fine. Uh, Mop-wise, yeah, let's just mop all that up. Sealing that all up, I of course have made horrible mistakes. I've now dumped a crap ton of oxygen and random gases into this tank up here. Uh, it's only this one tank though, so as so long as I filter this tank I should be fine. All I'll do is I'll make sure that nothing else connects to it. I'll just uh, disconnect that there. And then any more further nasty gases that uh, come along should hopefully not go into that tank. Mm. Or Well, okay, but I'll, I'll limit the damage. It was bound to happen that I'd make mistakes. Or several dozen. How did I lose power? This one has no power. How have you no power? Uh, the reason for the lack of power was hydrogen is no longer getting forced down here because there was no output forcing it down. I've had to reinstall the gas filter and repower it, and well, of course I did. But that should get the whole system repowered again, and we should still get enough hydrogen out of this to keep the whole system afloat. Whew. Worst case scenario, I could have injected hydrogen from up here anyway. Yeah, that'll be fine. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Whew. So, that's recovered from, for now. I'll still have to get this system back up and stable, but, oh, look at that. It's already sorted itself out. Those rotary gazes, they're just the best. Uh, now that that's all done, uh, time to fill up these tanks. I should probably set those to a higher priority, so seriously, I have so many high priority things going on at the moment. Hmm. You know what? I'm just going to do a little bit of stability testing first, uh, get this up and running, do some siding up on the power grid, and then we'll get on to the next project. And we've hit up another achievement because... What do we get this time? Some reservations. Build four nature reserves. Ah, uh, yes, yes, where was it? I queued up another... <laughs> I couldn't get this nature reserve to work, the pip wouldn't plant enough, but there was two plants, wild plants over here. I just uh, expanded the park a little bit, and now we have three natural parks there, one there, that's four, that's that achievement knocked off the list as well. 
Uh, at the time being, I'm just uh, coring out some of these slime biomes so I can get my hands on some more sedimentary rock. I started to run out of sedimentary rock. I didn't even think that was a thing I could possibly do, but yes, I managed to do it somehow. So I'm just going to core out these slime biomes for some raw resources. I also kind of want all the gold amalgam. And plus, you know, I like coring out biomes. Anyway, once that's all done, it's time to get on with the next stage. Uh, next stage should probably be hooking up this to uh, the main power grid so I can get rid of all these hamster wheels. And it's finally kicked in, the carnivore achievement. Finally. Let's have a quick look here. Carnivore, come on, give it to me. Uh, carnivore. 400,000 calories, 23 cycles remaining. Plenty of time. We got it to cycle 78. That's not too bad. Considering there was no prep work done, I, I don't think we did too badly on that one. If we had a plan to head better, we probably could have done that a little bit faster. Though I'm not sure which map would be better for attempting that. I'm sure there's a better map than, than Rhyme. Uh, Rhyme is... No, the Rhyme didn't turn out too bad, I suppose. I don't know. I really don't... Uh, I'm just going to be happy that it's finished and nothing horrible happened. Alright, done, dusted, and finished. I'm almost finished coring out this, though I'm probably going to end up coring out even more. I can't help myself. Once I start coring out areas, I like to be very thorough. Uh, down here, yeah, we're, we're using sedimentary rock to make the ladders. It's the closest form of material, which sort of defeats the purpose, but... Oh, what was it? I want to make sure that any liquid that comes out of here flows down here. I don't want it overflowing into my, uh, my oil biomes. You know what? We will expand this liquid tank just a little bit. We want some more space down here, don't we? Oh, you know what? We'll cancel that. We don't want that overflowing and breaking the, uh, the sides of the tank now. That would be bad. A little bit of smart digging and we don't end up getting ourselves terminated, but we, we did trap a dupe, because of course I did. Uh, but that should pour all the water down here without getting any into our oil biome. A little bit risky, but we're, we can't be we can't be too cautious at the moment. We need to move reasonably quickly to get this done in the time frame required. Up here we have uh, two kilns. Two of them are doing refined carbon, and then the other two kilns are doing ceramic. And we have one auto sweeper in the middle, just going nuts, filling them both up. Uh, that one can just hit that auto sweeper on the right, or hit that kiln on the right. And they're set up to, with clay and coal here, just to keep them stocked up. That is going to start dumping some serious temperature into there, which is good because I want to get that slickster out of the gate so I can start hiring more dupes. Now that I've got my food automated, my calories are going to go up consistently because I don't have to keep turning on and off the eggs. Oh, and you know what else we can do? We can set all of these to eight. We can put eight critters in all of these now because we don't care. I've also set them all to stone hatches. So every single one of these will now get phased out for stone hatches and we can switch everything over to, where is it, igneous rock? Though I, I actually have more sandstone than igneous but at the same time I com with the combined sedimentary granite and igneous I should yeah and obsidian I'll eventually have way more of them than I would have the sandstone so I'm better off doing it now but uh, that will get them all started changing them all over to stone hatchlings uh, so 100 cycles from now this whole area will just be nothing but stone hatches I've got two smooth hatch edges that s two smooth hatchling eggs have shown up so I've got them incubating now, and they're going to be put down here once they've hatched. This is where we're going to have uh, aluminum ore get refined. We need to refine 10 tons of ore using smooth hatches, and aluminum I have quite a bit of. Or, yeah, aluminum ore up there. We have 40... F Wait, no I don't. Oh, that's because a bunch of it is down in those containers. Uh, 22 tons of gold amalgam. Mm, yeah, I was going to do copper, but I figured that would be better. In fact, I might switch it over to iron if iron could be more plentiful. There's a huge vein of iron over here. It might be an idea to just rip that out. I'm going to need to refine iron, and I'm going to need to make steel. Anyway, no, no, no. First up, I need to find some way of getting the slickster out of there and keep it alive long enough to tame it. I've already lost the first batch of slicksters. I need to keep these ones alive, so more heat is going to be the order of the day. And for more heat, we need more power, don't we? Hmm. You know what? First, I'll move the, uh, the science facilities over here. I don't need them over there anymore. They can go away. This freezes up a bit of space to put in some ranching facilities. I'm also going to want to put in some more hydrogen generators. These hydrogen generators are going to be for powering my base uh, at the core. So you know what? Let's put them down here, nice and close. Mm. There we go. Quick little hydrogen generator room. So we'll have two hydrogen generators, a power control station so we can overclock them, and uh, just a smart battery. That's it. Oh, and ventilation-wise, we are going to want to plug them into this system. So I think the first thing I'm going to want to do is yeah, get the gas out of that tank. That tank has, is the one that's a mix of nasty stuff, so I'm going to put that through a gas filter. And once that's through the gas filter, it'll be fil uh, I'll filter it out, and once that's done, the rest of them should be perfectly clean. All the rest are just straight hydrogen. We're already filling up all those tanks. This thing is going to generate us plenty of power. 
And there we have ourselves switched over to a separate form of power. I've disabled the hamster wheels. We're no longer going to be using hamster wheels. We have, well, we have plenty of hydrogen. I'm going to have to find some other stuff to burn the hydrogen off. First off, though, I'm going to drain this tank. That's the mixed variety. That one's going to go in there, and that's going to provide us with our, our main grid power. So that's plugged directly into our main base to power everything. I've also enabled a bunch of space eaters. They are terrible. Efficiency-wise, they are useless. But I really want to print this uh, slickster. I need the slickster printed so I can start printing more duplicates. I want more duplicates now that I've got the available food. I also want to get those drecos out of there, so I'm putting down a couple of hatches, ranches down here for the drecos. I'm not going to be doing anything fancy with the drecos. I can't because I don't have exosuits yet, and or atmos suits, and you can't really use these without atmos suits. But I think uh, for now we're just going to get ourselves those drecos out of there, print the slickster, and then tame it. I want to get that slickster tamed up so that we can get this. Uh, get that at least knocked off of the achievements then I can get rid of those stupid space eaters but by and large that is the warmest part of my base combined with the the kilns that's definitely helped anyway quick I'll quick fast forward here after a little bit of effort we've got this ourselves together a little uh, stables down here we're gonna throw the Drekos in we're going to feed them meal wood we don't really have much choice because well I, I would prefer to feed them pinch of pepper nuts so that they don't uh, all turn into glossy Drekos but that takes more heat and I don't have the heat so we're stuck with meal wood Anyway, let's uh, wrangle those up. Uh, you know what? We'll make that a level 7. We want to get this done at some point. We've only got three ranchers and... Yeah, we've got, what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got seven ranches. That is an incredible amount of... Ah! And I also forgot to set up smooth... Where is it? Smooth hatch eggs. Yeah, they also have got to be collected for all of these. Done. And that should get whipped up because that was uh, leaving those over capacity. So they were overcrowded and they weren't dropping as many eggs as they should. My bad. Anyway, um, yeah, all of you are going to get wrangled up and I'm going to drop you all off in here. There we go. Drekos and Dreklets will get dropped off there. We'll make that a priority seven also. We're probably going to get to need to get in some incubators for these as well because, of course, we are. Uh, we'll get in a couple of incubators here. Well, let's see. I'm probably going to keep a fair few of them because I need to make a lot of exosuits and this might be the fastest way of doing it because, well, I'd, I'd have to heat up an area otherwise. So 5, 10, 15, 20, no, 20 is fine. We'll just uh, run a bunch of Dreco eggs through there and we should be grand. I'll have to figure out something to do with the plastic ones later. In the meantime, I have also done up a, a burn-off power room. This is for the hydrogen because we're, we're getting to that point. This hydrogen, this hydrogen backup tanks are nearly almost all full, and when they do, I want the overflow to uh, the overflow from the hydrogen here is going to go up, flow across here, and dump into these two hydrogen generators and get burnt off because we that will help us with our super sustainable achievement. You don't have to actually use the power to get super sustainable. You just, well, you just have to burn it off. Anyway, that's uh, uh, I think it's time we can print out this slickster. But first, let's get up a yeah a grooming station. You can't groom them though while they're juveniles. You have to wait till they, they grow up. So a slickster larvae, yeah, we gotta wait five cycles. Is it going to survive that long? Ah, oh, great. It's already gotten some, uh, found some carbon dioxide to consume. Temperature wise, you can survive 35C. Currently, we start at 94. Just don't. If it dumps crude oil all over the place, the crude oil will help us uh, conduct temperature between the ground and the actual slickster itself. That would be bad. We'd prefer if it didn't bother doing that. All we want to do is keep that alive long enough to tame it. That's it. At that point, it can get turned into meal or feed or whatever. I'm also going to have to get in that uh, that poke shell at some point as well and tame that up. But I think, yeah, I think we'll cut that out there. We're at uh, cycle 87. We've got pretty much most of the things done. Let me check research here. Now, I'm just going to knock out... When you're doing the research here you, and you don't have space, you can knock out the two basics, like the basic and the advanced research. You just can't do the interstellar. So I'm going to do that for both the solid cargoes and the solid fuel conversion combustion. It'll just help me later on. But once that's done, I'll, uh, I'll stop researching them because those symbols annoy me an awful lot. <laughs> anyway, carnivore, locavore, all the rest is now achievable. It's 100% achievable. The only question is, can we hit it by cycle 365? Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here. Hope you enjoyed and uh, good luck.